All right, everybody, in this video, I'm going to be showing session one of Bark Training with Cathane, also known as Cat. So she is the dog named Cat. Um, it's wet and nasty outside, so I have all the dogs inside, which is a problem number one. Um, the dogs are a distraction. I'll say yes and wave food around, and Ada breaks her place command. She thinks I'm trying to mark and reward her, and... Sophie's getting excited because the puppy's barking and running around and uh, so that's a little distracting that I shouldn't have done that but I don't want to leave the dogs outside or leave them crated because then they'll bark and it's distracting to the puppy so uh, I'm, I'm making do with it. Another thing is when I normally back tie a dog and do bark work I don't like having collars on. I like to you do harnesses because obviously if they're pulling on the collar, it's constricting the throat, it's making it hard to bark. So I normally don't do that, but in this case I couldn't find my harness. Uh, so I may do, I wanted to do something, I need to get her to bark on command because she's going crazy with barking. She's barking non-stop, except for whenever I want her to bark apparently. But this is a good first session, back tighter. And what I've noticed, though, in this session, which is a kind of a good positive with using the collar, um, to bark, she'll actually sit back, sit yes, down, and then give a nice throat bark. So the collar's actually kind of setting up that bark and hold for later, but it is what it is. Now, I'm using Abwa because I may want to use her for French ring later. Um, and by doing so, I'd like to have some French commands, but you can use... You know, revere, give blout, um, speak, whatever command you want. But here I, I'm just trying to put it on command. Now, some people will say, you know, tease the dog and then just shape it. Whenever it barks, you know, toss it a piece of food. Whenever it barks, toss a piece of food. And then whenever the dog is easily barking, then you put it on command. Well, for the bark command, I'm really not a... Uh, name it till you like it type of person. I want to put it on cue as fast as possible. I want the dog to clearly understand what it is. So here I'm just chanting the <laughs> excuse me the uh, the abwa command to get her to bark, and when she barks, I'll reward it. So here you'll see her squeak and kind of whine and and do some vocalization, but I only want her to get rewarded for nice loud solid barks and you see here she she will launch her head straight back at a nice solid bark and then she gets excited and kind of pulls and lunges so she has good energy she has good focus and uh, she's not really apprehensive to that back pressure which is going to be amazing for bite work later um, you see her soft ears she's teething so hopefully after she gets done teething they'll pop back up but um She's a solid little girl. You see her uh, frame there. She's just now, just now short of four months. Here in about another week, she'll be four months old. So, uh, nice solid little frame for a four month old puppy. And there's some nice solid barks. I mark and I reward and I move back. I also have a bag of dog food behind the camera that if uh, she's not barking as often as I want, I'll shake the bag a little bit. Um, another uh, mistake that I kind of made is I, I made the session a little too long. Usually I want the, uh, the sessions with puppies to be shorter, um, to stop on a good note. Um, but honestly, I, I want to get this bark on command yes, as soon as possible so I can teach the quiet girl. command. Another secret that I like to use the uh, bark command for is it takes a lot of energy for a dog to bark. A lot of people yes, don't realize yes, this. Um, whenever they're stressed out, they like to bark. Whenever they're um, really high in energy, they like to bark. So what I'll do is if... Uh, I have a dog that has a lot of energy and they're not focusing. If they know the, you know, the bark command, I'll get them to bark repetitively over and over and over again to relieve some of that stress, that anxiety, or that energy, so that way they'll calm down a little bit and focus on training if we're doing obedience or tracking or something like that. So I'll use that bark command to de-stress the situations 
and and things that can really affect a dog's temperament in that given time and moment. And here, so uh, not Sophie, but Ada is um, creating a distraction, but we're we're dealing with it. So uh, the bark command is more than just you know teaching the dog to bark at somebody. It's more than just to teach the quiet command. It's also a really fun thing to use later. Um, sometimes whenever I want the dog to do something, I'll tell it to speak. Um, I have a video of my old mutt, Coda. Um, before we would feed him every night, I'd put him in a sit. I would put his food down. I'd tell him to speak. He'd speak. I'd tell him to quiet. He'd quiet. I'd tell him to down. He'd down. I'd tell him to sit. He'd sit. I'd tell him to speak. And then I'd release him to go eat. Because it's fun. It's vocalization. It's giving him a voice. He's saying, I really want that food, I'll do whatever you want. So put the you know, bark command um, on cue and, and fit it in your everyday thing. A lot of people are afraid to teach the bark command because they're afraid it'll just teach the dog to bark all the time. But if you put it on command, then uh, the dog will learn that it'll get rewarded if it barks on command, but it'll get corrected if it barks you know when it's not supposed to and that's what's good about teaching the bark command and the quiet command because um, they, they work together so um, if the dog is barking and it doesn't understand why uh, why you are correcting it, it it doesn't you know fully appreciate what you're trying to do with the dog if you put a shock collar on the dog that you know, sh shocks the dog every time it uh, barks um, you're taking its voice away so what I like to do is you know, put it on command so I can tell it to Place. quiet. And then if it doesn't quiet, then I correct it for yes. disobeying the quiet command. And it understands there's a time to bark and there's a time not to bark. And that's why I love this command in the beginning stages. Because um, in puppyhood, they're going to be spending a lot of time in crates. So you want them to understand uh, whenever they're barking to quiet. So they'll quiet Abba. down. Or if you Abba. put them in there, you can tell them to bark, 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 bark. Abba. Before you put them in the crate, I'm sorry. But before you put them in the crate, tell them to bark, 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 Abba. bark, bark. Tell them Abba. to quiet, put them in the crate. Yes. And they understand that at that point they're supposed to be quiet. Because the dog needs to understand why Abba. they're getting corrected. Um, if Abba. you reward the dog outside of the crate, um, then it's going to reinforce Abba. the barking command. So if you use the crate to teach the bark, then you're actually teaching the dog to bark in the crate. But hopefully this quick little video shows you um, a little bit of our session one and how I'll start to train some dogs on how to bark on command.